Tag TV brings you daily news bulletin from India. Breaking news and views from India. Good evening, welcome to South Asia Newsline. I'm Uzma Jafri. Here are the top stories we are tracking for you. India's PM Modi extends investment in green energy at Global Investors Summit. Pakistan agrees to IMF conditions on release of $1.1 billion funding. And extreme weather patterns in Indian Hill State worry locals, says experts. And now for all the details. India's Prime Minister Narendra Modi on Friday inaugurated the UP Global Investors Summit in Northern Lucknow City and extended investment opportunities in health, education, green growth and social infrastructure sectors in the country. The three-day event is expected to be attended by a host of investors, policy makers and leading industrialists. Indian Prime Minister Narendra Modi on Friday said health, education, green growth and social infrastructure sectors in the country provide immense opportunities for investors as he inaugurated the UP Global Investors Summit in Northern Lucknow City. The three-day summit is a flagship annual event organized by the government of Uttar Pradesh state to bring investors, policy makers, academia and industrialists under one roof. This year's budget has allocated $4 billion only towards energy transition, PM Modi highlighted. He said along with infrastructure, Uttar Pradesh has changed its approach for ease of doing business and is driving the growth of new India. Today, health, education, social infrastructure, mein investment ke bhi anek aousar hai. ग्रीन ग्रोथ के जिस रास्ते पर भारत चल पड़ा है उसमें तो मैं आपको विशेष रूप से आमंत्रित करता हूं इस वर्ष के बजट में 35000 करोड़ रुपए तो हमने सिर्फ एनर्जी ट्रांजिशन के लिए रखे हैं Meanwhile, industry leaders including Reliance Industries Chairman Mukesh Ambani also addressed the summit and hailed this year's budget for resource allocation for country's growth. PM Modi had earlier on Monday said that India represented a major opportunity for foreign investors in the energy sector as the nation looks to boost its local output while continuing to cut emissions. India has set a goal for net zero carbon emissions by 2070. India on Friday successfully placed three satellites, including an Earth observation satellite, in their intended orbits through small satellite launch vehicle SSLV. The maiden flight of the SSLV had suffered a partial failure earlier in August when it had placed the injected satellite into a highly elliptical, unstable orbit. The Indian Space Research Organization, ISRO, on Friday successfully placed Earth observation satellite EOS-07 along with two other passenger satellites in their orbits in the second flight of small satellite launch vehicle SSLV. The maiden flight of SSLV D1 carrying EOS-02 and an ATU CubeSat Azadi set had taken place in August 2022 but had failed to place the satellites in their intended orbit, paving way for SSLV D2. In the current flight, the SSLV D2 was carrying three satellites, EOS-07 and Zenus-1 by US-based company Antares and Azadi Sat-2 by indigenous startup Space Kids. Speaking on the occasion, ISRO chief S. Somnath congratulated the scientists for their efforts to rectify the problem in a very fast pace. So we have a new launch vehicle, small satellite launch vehicle SSLV in its second attempt. Today, SSLV D2 has placed the EOS-07 satellite in its intended orbit very accurately. Along with the EOS-07, 
Two more satellites were also placed in the required orbit, Janus-1 by, through NSIL and from the Antares, and Asadisat through InSpace, uh, by the, realized by the space kids. August, 7th August, as mentioned by Chairman, we had a small anomaly observed in that, and we couldn't put the satellites in the intended orbit. But detailed analysis further by a number of teams was carried out and we were able to pinpoint the problem in the system and we had to overcome that. According to the Indian Space Agency, SSLV caters to the launch of up to 500 kg satellites to low Earth orbits on a launch on demand basis. The rocket provides low cost access to space, offers low turnaround time and flexibility in accommodating multiple satellites and demands minimal launch infrastructure. In news from Pakistan, the Pakistan government has agreed with the International Monetary Fund on the conditions to release about 1.1 billion US dollars in critical funding, Finance Minister Ishaq Dar said on Friday, adding that the payout was delayed due to routine procedures. Outlining the policy measures agreed upon, Dar said taxes amounting to rupees 170 billion would have to be imposed. Pakistan's Finance Minister Ishak Dar on Friday informed that the government has received MEFP, the Memorandum of Economic and Financial Policies from the International Monetary Fund Mission, which was present in the South Asian nation for the last 10 days. Addressing the media after the IMF delegation left Pakistan, Dar said the government will look over the MEFP and will hold a virtual meeting with the global lender on Monday, indicating that a staff-level agreement with the lender was still pending. Outlining the policy measures agreed upon, Dar said taxes amounting to Rs 170 billion would have to be imposed. We will try not to impose any tax that directly burdens the common man, he added. He also said that the government had already fulfilled the commitment to raise the petroleum development levy on petrol to Rs 50 per litre, whereas the levy on diesel would also be raised to Rs 50 in the coming months. The IMF funding is necessary to prevent Pakistan from defaulting on external payment obligations and pave the way for other organizations and governments to provide funds. The country urgently needs to complete the ninth review to unlock the disbursement of $1.2 billion dollars as the country's reserves are enough for only 16 to 17 days of imports, reports suggest. In news from Afghanistan, as many as 35 universities in Afghanistan are on the verge of closure as several face economic challenges after the Taliban's ban on education for females in the country. A report. Scores of universities in Afghanistan are on the verge of closure as several face economic challenges after the Taliban's ban on education for females in the country, reports have suggested. In the latest degree last month, the Taliban banned female students from sitting in university entrance exams. The decision was followed by another decree from the caretaker government prohibiting women from working in non-governmental organizations, which has sparked outrage on both the national and international levels. The union representing public and private universities said 35 universities will be shut down if the Islamic Emirate does not revise its decision about women's education, local media reported. According to the union, 6,000 employees of private universities have become jobless. The Islamic Nations Grouping, the Organization of Islamic Cooperation, has also condemned the ban on women's and girls' access to work and education as a violation of the Islamic law. The state-owned Sri Lankan Airlines has defaulted on a 175 million US dollars bond as it was unable to meet a 6 million dollars interest payment due in December. Its chairperson said on Thursday, this comes as the island nation itself defaulted on loans last year amid its ongoing worst economic crisis. State-owned Sri Lankan Airlines has defaulted on a 175 million dollars bond as it was unable to meet a $6 million interest payment due in December, 
its chairperson Ashok Pathirage said on Thursday as the country struggles with its worst economic crisis in decades. We will follow Treasury guidelines on this. We are also engaging with bondholders, Pathirage said. The government guaranteed unsecured notes are due in 2024. This comes as the island nation of 22 million people itself defaulted on loans last year and is seeking $2.9 billion urgently from the International Monetary Fund to tide over a severe shortage of dollars to buy essentials. President Ranil Vikramasinghe told Parliament on Wednesday that Sri Lanka's economy was expected to grow again from the end of this year and hoped the country would emerge from the economic crisis by 2026. Vikramasinghe said Sri Lanka's foreign reserves are now at $500 million after having fallen to zero last year. He said Sri Lanka was working with China, its largest bilateral lender, to seek financing assurances supporting a debt restructuring to finalize the IMF program. Moving on to news from Nepal. Shrugging aside widespread protests, the Cricket Association of Nepal has inducted rape-accused and under-investigation star cricketer Sandeep Lamishane in its squad for the triangular series scheduled for next week. The 22-year-old was arrested in October 2022 and spent the rest of the year behind the bars before being released on bail last month. He is accused of raping a 17-year-old minor. People on social media expressed their anger over the move to induct him back, with some calling out institutions for failing to secure zero tolerance for violence against women. The leg spinner was appointed as Nepal cricket team captain in 2021. He has been the face of cricket in Nepal, being the only player from the Himalayan country to feature in prominent 2020 leagues across the world. Experts in India's Himachal Pradesh have warned the growing change in the weather pattern in the northern hill state is a matter of grave concern. People in the region have been experiencing extreme weather variability like hotter days and winters and scanty precipitation. Experts in India's northern hill state of Himachal Pradesh have warned the growing change in the weather pattern in the region is a matter of grave concern. Himachal Pradesh, a scenic Himalayan region where many people from hotter parts of the country travel to escape the extreme summer temperatures, has been experiencing extreme weather variability like hot days in winters and scanty precipitation. Tourists, including professional skiers in the famous skiing spot of Narkanda, said they were alarmed to see a diminished snow cover which also hampered the spot. I intermediate level. Ka skier I had advanced course. Ke liye aana tha. पर जितनी रिक्वायर्ड स्नोफॉल चाहिए होता है वो यहां पे नहीं था तो इसलिए एडवांस कोर्स इस बार नहीं हो रहा है तो मेरा करियर कहीं ना कहीं इंपैक्टेड होगा इससे और रीजन इसका कहीं ना कहीं हर जगह वैसा ही है ग्लोबल वार्मिंग है ही है नारकंडा जैसी जगह पे भी देख लीजिए ऐसा हो रहा है जहां पे नॉर्थ फेसिंग स्लोप है यहां पे यूजुअली बहुत स्नो रहता है और इस साल एक्सपेक्ट नहीं किया था हमने तो इस कैंप्स नहीं लग पा रहे हैं लोगों ने कंपीट करना था बहुत दिक्कत आ रही है Apple growers in Shimla region are also bearing the brunt of the impact of climate change as they have been witnessing dry spells or ultimately rains which have hit their yield. There are three कारण तो एक ओवरऑल जो एक क्लाइमेटिक वेरिएबिलिटी है जो एक ग्लोबल पैटर्न्स है या आप कह सकते हैं कि क्लाइमेट चेंज एक बड़ा कारक है इसका इन द हिमालयन स्टेट्स स्पेशली हिमाचल प्रदेश एंड उत्तराखंड रिसीव मिलियंस ऑफ टूरिस्ट्स एवरी ईयर व्हिच इज आल्सो अ कॉज ऑफ वरी फॉर एनवायरमेंटलिस्ट्स एज दे से द फुटफॉल इज स्लोली इरोडिंग द फ्रेजाइल इकोसिस्टम ऑफ द रीजन Scientists have often warned that at least a third of the ice in the Himalayas and the Hindu Kush will thaw this century as temperatures rise, disrupting river flows vital for growing crops in the northern plains. Well, that's all we have for you from South Asia this evening. Now our viewers can watch the show on SouthAsianewsline.com. You can also visit us on Facebook.com slash SAsianewsline and follow us on Twitter at SAsianewsline. That's all in tonight's edition. We will see you same time next week. Have a great weekend. Good night.
Tag TV brings you daily news bulletin from India. Breaking news and views from India.